Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Annual Report Analysis. Today's uh, case study is analyzing a loss-making company. So in our case, we will look at American Axel Manufacturing. Okay. So uh, let's first see what is that company. Okay. So American Axel uh, Manufacturing is uh, basically um, like, you know, uh, it manufactures uh, different uh, spare parts for, you know, leading uh, car manufacturers like General Motor and uh, Ford. So uh, let's uh, figure out. So this is, again, the 10K report, uh, like, you know, the link. And uh, let's look at the interactive data and see what is what was its uh, income statement for the, the latest, uh, like, you know, the 10K report. So here we go and see the consolidated operations. So here we can see that even though the company had gross profit of uh, almost $582 million 2020 and in 2019 and 18 had uh, still larger gross profits, but it still made a net loss here. If you see at the bottom, like of $561 million in 2020, $484 million in 2019 and about $56 million in 2018. So now the question arises, how do we go about analyzing such a company, right? Like you might be thinking like, okay, if it's a loss making company, then why do I even bother? So the objective of such kind of analysis is to figure out, number one, the strength of the balance sheet. Obviously everything starts from a balance sheet. Number two is, is this a loss like a temporary thing and what are the chances for the company to recover? And number three, you have to figure out is why they are making loss. So again, if we remember, the income statement is created uh, is created using the accrual accounting method, right? So a company might have a positive cash flow, but because of some accounting rules, it might have to show loss. So all these things we will consider. Okay. So here in this case, uh, let's first look at uh, like you know all the cash flows income statement and balance sheet so what i've done here is i have taken an excel sheet and i have kind of copy pasted all the income statements balance sheet and cash flow since the year 1998 so that we have a good historical background okay so let's start with 1998 99 2000 so here you see the company had a steady um, a net sales, $2 billion, $2.9, $3 billion, okay? And uh, it its net income was, like, you know, it made profit, $129 billion, $115, million, okay? Then, uh, similarly, in the year 2001, 2 and 3, here you can see at the bottom, it had a decent net income, okay? Then, 4, 5, and 6 here, you see the 2006 was the first year it actually made some kind of a loss okay so that's one thing to consider now we'll go back and figure out so here you can actually see they had a loss because they had a gross profit loss itself so that means the sales the cost of goods sold were more than this and again this was near the you know the financial crisis that time and there might be some reason so but okay let's go further and then we'll come back to this then let's see the seven eight nine this was a very crucial period if you uh, everyone remembers the uh, financial uh, meltdown happened and uh, the auto companies uh, they were having issues and uh, so the, all the uh, uh, auto manufacturers are their customers and the general motors and ford and uh, so they had problems so here you see a huge gross profit loss so when there is a gross profit loss that means the cost of goods sold itself was more than the sales so obviously uh, it's because you know if the plants are not producing in full capacity but they still have to pay for the labor and uh, you know the overheads and everything so that kind of thing uh, arises and this is also it showcases that the economics of this uh, kind of a business is not that great because they have huge fixed costs. Okay, so, so 2008 and 2009 they had this thing. Then again, 2010, 11, 12. Here you see they uh, they actually made uh, 
pretty good profit. So they again came back to profit in 2010, 11, 12. So that only showcases that those losses were temporary and it was able to bounce back. Okay, then we uh, we see uh, <clears throat> 2017, 18, and 19, and here again uh, we are seeing uh, like you know a lot of uh, losses and but their gross profit they had a good gross profit. That means the losses were coming for different reasons. So here the first thing you can see is the impairment losses. So what this means is so in 2000. Um, 665 million was the impairment loss here you can see and 485 million 2018 so a bit combined it is almost 1.1 billion dollars so what this means is they paid way more than what the business was worth when they acquired certain businesses and obviously because of the accounting rules they figured out that and they had to take those charges now again remember these charges are only accounting related charges and nothing to do with cash flows that we'll see later on okay and then finally in the year 2020 also they had uh, even though they had a gross profit positive they again had an, another impairment charge of 500 million so for 3 years together they had almost one and a half 1.6 billion dollars accounting charges so now let's look at the cash flow okay so remember the cash flow is the main thing right like if you think about it like the whole the core reason a business is there is just so that it can generate cash so here if you see the cash flow from operating activities was positive 98 99 2000 which is not uh, surprising because uh, obviously the net income was also there and it was able to use the cash flows that we, they generated to purchase more plant and equipment but they also acquired a business so that's the first acquisition they did around the year 1999 now again if you look at the uh, uh, like you know 2001 2 and 3 they had again positive cash flows here and then they used those cash flows to acquire more pro property and plant and equipment okay then 4 5 and 6 Again, same thing. So in the year 2006, even though they had a loss, year 222 million, but they still had a, like you know a, a positive operating cash flow that they used for uh, buying property equipment. They bought leasehold equipment. So obviously the investing cash flows were more, and that you can see that they were able to finance by using the debt. Okay, so they they were able to issue long term debt and do it. Okay. Then uh, if you come down seven, eight, and nine, even though, so 2008 was the only year where they had a little bit negative cash flow, even, uh, and the other years also, so, so seven and nine, even though they had, uh, 2009 they had lost, but they still had a little bit positive cash flow and they were able to survive. That's how, and they obviously had to go and borrow more money, but still they were able to pay the interest and they were able to survive those things, okay? Then if you come down 2010, 11, and 12, here again you can see that uh, 2000, uh, sorry, uh, <clears throat> 12, they had a little bit negative cash flow because they had to, I think, pay back a lot of accounts receivable that were piling up. And uh, that, uh, and also they had a big contribution towards pension and retirement, okay, $208 million, which is okay, that reduced their pension liability but still they were able to sustain that, okay? And they were able to finance using a little long-term debt and all those things. And then let's see here, as we come nearby, 13, 14, 15, uh, they had a positive cash flow, very healthy cash flow, 377 million, 318 million, 223 million. So here you can see 13, 14, 15, and they were able to use that to acquire uh, you know uh, to invest back in property plant and equipment and if you come down 16 17 18 also they had positive cash flows here and even though they had losses but still they are all related to uh, like you know uh, impairment of goodwill so they didn't impact their cash flows and they were cash flow positive and uh, they still were able to pay uh, raise the debt but also they were able to pay back a lot of debt okay so here you can see uh, like as we are saying like 
every year other than i think 2006 they were able they were cash flow positive and they were able to generate and they were able to sustain now let's look at the balance sheet okay so obviously the the stockholders equity so here if you go go up and look at uh, you know the the equity portion so 2000 uh, before 2006 obviously uh, so here if you see um, uh the retained or uh, uh, 2005 the retained earnings was 843 million so here uh they they had a book value of almost 994 million and because after that they had accounting losses their retained earnings went down and their book value went down but obviously this went down because their goodwill went down so this is again a little tricky part here the goodwill increases as you acquire businesses but if you figure out that those businesses you paid more than what you should have we shouldn't have you see uh, the uh, like you know your retained earnings also reduce so what it shows like long story short is this is a business with uh, okay moat so because uh, again so let's go back here and just look at the annual report okay and let's look at the what they do first okay so you here you can see uh, you know they are uh, basically a tier one uh, supplier of automotive industry and they supply to general motors that makes up over 37 percent of their business number two is fca us llc they uh, uh, like the for ram full size uh, product and also they supply to ford so the number one obviously uh, the issue that someone can ask is like you know they're they have uh, exposure, huge exposure to only certain customers. So if those customers are impacted, they also get impacted. So which only shows like their business uh, economics are okay. They're not that great. The number two, if you look, come down and uh, look at, uh, you know, the risk factors, they have uh, kind of pretty uh, significant risks related to, you know, uh, 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 like impact in the automotive industry, then ex their exposure to GM, FCA, Ford, that's their uh, one of the topmost risks. And also they have, they're totally dependent on a manufacturing complex in Mexico, where in case of there are labor issues and all, they can have problem. So overall, if, if one looks at it, they have, a, it's a business with not that great moat, uh, but oh, also significant risk, but if you come down and if you look at uh you know the cash flows so over here if you look at the last three years cash flows you can see that the business almost generated close to uh let's let's go back here 2018 19 20 right so if you add these three years so here if you add you know these three years 771 559 454 so uh, 9, 1.6, so almost $1.7 billion, $1.75 billion they generated out of their operating activities, in which obviously about $1.1 billion they were able to put back in their investments. Then, guess what? So they, have, they were able to pay back their loans and they were able to also uh, pay back their long-term debt. So overall, if you look at the cash flows perspective, they this is a business almost generating about 300 to 400 million dollars free cash flow. And oh, if you, if you look at so let's let's look at the uh, AXO stock price. Uh, and uh, if you look at the uh, like what what it is selling for, so it's selling for about a billion dollars. So this is basically what we are talking about is something called, you know, when Warren Buffett has referred is the cigar butt businesses, right? So, I mean, they're not like that great, but they are significantly cheap considering the cash flow they generate and this amount, this, uh, this thing they are selling. So now obviously you might ask, so why is market discounting? Well, because they have had short-term issues and you know they they have losses and everything 
but they are also able to recover okay so after 2008 they did recover they are going down and they recovered so now as a investor and if you are thinking in long term 